Good evening, my friends. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Tom, and the color cast is on the air now for Tuesday night, March the 23rd, 1999. We're a little late tonight because of the CBS television movie, which ran about 10 minutes long. I believe it starred our friend Bonnie Hunt, who's here tomorrow night, a picture called Only You. But I'm telling CBS right now, I will not stand for this delay any longer. <laughs> Three more, out the door. <laughs> you solve the problems. Tony Curtis, our old pal, is here tonight who has his own website where you can see his paintings, which are wonderful. And David Milch, the co-creator of NYPD Blue and you on the toll-free. You know, this, uh, this farewell thing is getting a little serious now. There have been some very nice articles written about this program and about myself. Uh, David Bean Cooley in the New York Daily News was most gracious, as was Diane Wirtz in uh, Long Island Newsday. Uh, Phil Rosenthal in the Chicago Sun-Times and Joe Keenan in uh, TV Guide. You know, I have not done any interviews with the press because this is not a great big deal. I mean, let's face it, the world is going to go on even though TS is going off the air. And all my life I've done, uh, let me put it to you this way. When, when, when you go into this business as a kid, which I did, uh, the reason you go into it is not to become a celebrity or a star or famous or, or, or uh, notorious. Uh, all of us uh, who broadcast went into this business to get on the air and, in my case, tell the news. This started back at a radio station in Wisconsin almost, uh, well, it's 1955, 44 years ago. And we didn't realize getting into this that it would lead to notoriety or fame and pictures in the paper and columns in the paper and stuff like that. And, 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 and what I've tried to do all along, especially the last five or six years in my, in my television life, is to keep things as quiet as possible. I would rather not see my picture in the paper. I would rather not have my birthday announced on the radio. I would rather not have photographers at my house when I wake up in the morning, so I try to sneak through life and appear quietly on television very, very late at night. You notice I don't do prime time. I don't do the nightly news. I don't do 11.30. I just sneak in here at 1 o'clock in the morning, do my little dirty work, and get on with my life. So, <laughs> And by the way, I've, I've gotten a lot of letters from people who applaud the work that we have done here, and I appreciate that, and I will try and thank all of you. And I have gotten a fair number of emails from those people who think that I am the biggest flaming butthole that's ever been on television. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you get it both ways if, if, if you catch my drift. But I do thank the ladies and gentlemen of the press who have been kind enough to write about this program and about the kind of television that we do here, which will leave the airwaves, uh, hopefully not forever, but will leave the airwaves on Friday night, March the 26th. Having said that, let's get on with Tony Curtis and David Milch. But first, a look back. One of the things I've loved about this program, and one of the things I loved dearly about doing talk radio for ABC some years ago, is the toll-free line. And I know we don't do nearly as many calls here on television as we did on radio, but believe me, those of you who watch these programs, and those of you who listen to talk radio, are in many ways far wiser than those of us who do talk radio or talk television. I have learned more from you folks in terms of feedback, in terms of opinion, in terms of, of correctness, than I ever thought possible from a radio or television audience. And uh, in some cases on this program, the, uh, the, the talk back on the phone has been serious, and in other cases it has been light and quite delightful. And I have two examples involving um, Bonnie Hunt, who will be here tomorrow night, and uh, Gary Shandling when he appeared on the Larry Sanders Show on HBO. These are from years and years and years ago, but they're just as funny to me today as they were then, and I hope they are to you as well. Here we go. I want to ask Gary something. He always acts like he's so insecure around women. And it just seems to me that he probably maybe was when he was much younger, but well, really isn't that way no. anymore. What is your name? <laughs> Seriously. You, you want my phone number? No. Kathleen? Yes. Come here. <laughs> Come here. Kathleen. I'm sitting on top of my set. All right. Careful. <laughs> for you? Strangely enough, I'm sitting on top of my set. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Kathleen and I have something in common already. Believe it or not, I'm a voice from your past. And from I my past. I love it. But I'm what? sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. What? I said I'm a voice from your past. Mm -hmm. And I called not only to tell you how proud I am, but to ask you if you remember writing something to the effect of congratulations on your graduation. I will never forget you or you putting the match out on your tongue and all the times we spent on your front porch. And I had a very unusual last name that they made a lot of fun of. It started with a C. <laughs> wow, what a setup. <laughs> um, was it a nickname? Yeah, definitely. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't remember. I do remember many girls putting matches out on their tongue in the old neighborhood, though. 
if I gave you the last... Well, anything. yeah, go ahead. You can tell me. Oh, it's kind of embarrassing on the air, but how about cock? I had a brother named David. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> go to bed. Go to bed. Well, Mary, it's so nice to hear from you. <laughs> Say hello to your parents, Mr. and Mrs. Cock. It was an abbreviated name. Oh! <laughs> oh okay. It was nice of you to clean it up for us. <laughs> <laughs> and you should have seen their listing in the phone book, huh? Tony Curtis is here tonight along with our friend David Milch from NYPD Blue and you on the toll-free. I'm Tom. You're watching CBS. And thanks for catching our stuff as we fly through the air. <laughs>
excuse me, the Bel Air Hotel and the Beverly Hills Hotel. He'd always have a bungalow, wouldn't it? So uh, and whenever I started to uh, uh, lose my track a little bit, he'd fish me in, give me a room in, the, uh, in his suite, and there I'd stay for two, three days. And straighten yourself out. I, he was the best. He was the best, you know. Let me ask you about another face that popped mm. up on the screen during the Academy Awards that we lost this year, and that's Stanley Kubrick. You worked with Stanley, Stanley Kubrick. Kubrick. You worked with him in, yeah, uh, in we did Spartacus, Spartacus together. Stanley and I were the youngest members of the cast and the crew almost. You know, he was uh, he was three years younger than I. And when did we do that movie in the sixties? I think he was around thirty-two, and I was thirty-four. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, there was an affinity between us, perhaps because of our age, but also because of his gift. He was a brilliant, uh, a brilliant person. You know, very dedicated, very. You know, these guys go out and make movies, right? They spend 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollars, and they gotta gross 200 million. To break even. Yeah, Stanley never did that. The movie he made, just the last one he made, uh, what was it called? Kiss Me Stupid? No. What's it? Uh, with my eyes shut, wide open, my eyes wide open. Don't give me memory tests this no, week, no, okay? No. Don't this give me any tests this week. Anyway, he shot the film, he photographed it, okay? He directed it, he produced it, he wrote it. He had one guy working the lights and one guy working sound. He got everybody to work for nothing. He made the picture for really a, a really small number. And there's a picture that's going to go out and gross an incredible amount of money. That's how clever he was. Now, let me ask you here about yeah. Spartacus. The last time you were here, you told the story about the crosses, you right. know, with the dummy. All right? Right. There was a scene uh, shot for that picture in which you bathed Lawrence Olivier. I did. I gave him a nice scrub down. Right. And, yes. And in fact, we see it right here. You do. Very, very, <gasps> good, very good looking young man on, oh, the left, thank you. Giving, on the left, giving a nice massage to him. And an where older am I gentleman. doing it? In his armpit. Thank you yeah. very much. Now, this scene was not in the original release no, no, of the no, picture. No, no, no. They wouldn't put it in. And tell why they wouldn't. Well, they wouldn't put it in because it had homosexual uh, inclinations, you mm -hmm. know? And for me, it was a unique film. With these three guys, the one guy nuts about the younger man, and mm -hmm. the younger man uh, nuts about the older guy because he reminds him of his father. Of his father. The, the, I've never seen a movie that had that kind of a tension in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, the reason I liked it, doing it and wanted to do was because of that scene in the bathtub, where he expresses to me, "Do you like oysters?" I said, uh, "Yeah, I love oysters." What about snails? No, 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 I don't know about snails. He says, do you think it's a moral question or a, uh, a question of taste? Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I finally got what he was leading uh -huh. to. You got I said, the well, uh, I don't know. He says to me, it, uh, I love both oysters and snails. Very delicate way to tell me that he'd jump in any direction. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And we shot the scene. But I, w I noticed when we did it, you know, uh, that we didn't cover it. It was just a two-shot and no cover. So I had suspicions that perhaps they wouldn't put it in the movie, which they wouldn't, you know. But then when it was re-released... We put it back in the film, back, and, yeah. but, uh, but dear Larry Olivier was dead by that time. So they got Anthony Hopkins to play uh, Larry Olivier. To do his and, voice? Yeah, Antoninus. I mean, he was just perfect for it. Every time I run across him, I sneak up behind him and go, Antoninus. <laughs> he's, a, he's a charming man. Anyway, then they, when they put that scene back in the movie, you know, it, it, it really had another texture, another yeah, quality yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. It was important to see uh, uh, the personal lives of these people. Yeah. You know? Okay, let me take a little break here. We're Please. chatting with Tony Curtis, uh, uh, our artist and uh, actor. The toll free is up and running. We'll be right back after this short break. We are back with Tony Curtis here, Shell on the toll free in Toronto, Ontario. Hi, Shell, and welcome to CBS Late Night. Hello. Hello. How Hello. are you? I'm fine, thanks, and I hope you are. Go ahead, please. Yes, I am. I wanted to ask Mr. Curtis if the Hollywood me, Tony, blacklist honey. had any effect on his career. Say again. What? Sorry. Say that again. I wanted to ask Mr. Curtis if the Hollywood blacklist had any effect on his his working in the in the uh, film no it did not oh, i started in movies in 48 which was the height of the un-american activities environment 
Uh, I just got out of the Navy. I was 21, 22 years old, not interested in politics on any level. But when I came to California, I felt the vibrations of what was happening. I could see the fear and loathing in people, frightened to death of uh, being exposed for what? We're getting exposed every day. I mean, uh, what happened, what happened in Washington not too long ago is an exposure, you know, but it's past. And uh, uh, I, I, I was sad about that. I didn't quite understand what that meant. You know, I wasn't quite sure what they meant by un-American right, activities. Right. I didn't hear any guy get up and say, I've got a bomb and down with America. No. I just heard these guys say, wait a minute, my right as an American is I don't have to tell you anything. That's right. That's right. And but I it, thought, was a, it was a time in America of great fear and great suspicion engendered yes. by Senator McCarthy and others yes, who were on right. a witch hunt for people that they perceived to be un-American because right. they may have had a past affiliation with socialism exactly. or communism. I, they, uh, I saw a show where they had some of the film clips of it, and there's Nixon sitting in. I didn't oh, forgot yeah. that he was part of that, oh, yeah. Yeah. that uh, uh, group. So uh, I'm glad that we've, uh, we've come through all of these vicissitudes, so to speak, of our lives. Uh, we have come through a lot in this country. I was chatting with people this evening. Uh, they say that now is a tough time for young people in America. Forget it. How about when the Civil War was <laughs> yeah, going please on? Please tell how, me how about, about it. How about that 600,000 young men died yeah, in that war. Yeah. How about that? 600,000. 600, Shai, I'm, Shai, I'm glad you called. Thank and you, thanks Shai. for watching our program. Thanks, Tom, sorry. and you know that we're all going to miss you. I We've understand that, and I'm, I, I'm going to miss you, too, but life goes on, and life yeah. is beautiful. Beautiful. Well, and good luck to you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bye bye. Um, you're still a good looking man. I mean, Thank you. You, have you done anything to preserve your good looks? I have indeed. You have? I've gotten richer. <laughs> <laughs> and believe you me, it don't hurt. Right? Well, I just wondered have you ever had any augmentation or a little <laughs> nip or a little tuck? Yes, I have. I've, uh, I've gone to a doctor. Uh, when I was doing cocaine, I. Uh, I tore a hole in between my nose. They yep. call it a deviated septum. septum right? Thank God that's the only thing that was deviated. Yes. yes. So we had a fix that. I had a lump taken out of my nose. I've had uh, some work done on my eye, eyelids on the top. And when I, get, when I grow up, I plan to go and have a really extraordinary experience <laughs> with it. I think it's excellent. I think it's excellent for anybody, you know. Maintain those, your self-confidence, right? Well, it helps you. I mean, you know, sure. what about those rhinoceries? What do they call that the, the, the operation where they rhinoplasty? Rhinoplasty. What? Rhinoplasty. I knew you'd know that name. Yeah, those for people with big schlazola. What about, uh, what was the name? <laughs> Jones. Paula Jones, she had it scooped out of there. <laughs> scooped out, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you notice any difference in me? <laughs> or, or they load you up with uh, And silicone. did you have any after effects after you had prostate surgery? Uh, well, after the prostate surgery, you know, uh, the prostate produces semen that gets connected with the sperm. Right. Shall I go further? Please do. All right. Yeah. And eventually this is, this is it anatomy, bursts. This, excuse me. This is Anatomy 101 with yeah, Mr. Yeah. Kurt, Professor it, Curtis. It, is here. It, it bursts finally, right? Mm -hmm. By taking the prostate out, mm -hmm. you uh, eliminate the, uh, the uh, semen. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, you don't ejaculate. I see. Right? But it's all metal. And you've got to look at it that way. A lot of men feel... But, like, does everything else work okay? Everything works out fine. It's right. uh, just a little different, you know, mm -hmm. and you've got to be patient with yourself. Yes. And uh, <laughs> you've got to say to us, sit down and wait. <laughs> I'll be with you in about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> then they came along with Viagra and said you had two hours. That was an hour and 57 minutes longer than I'd ever done before. <laughs> Anyway, listen, that's our life, pal. Yeah, I understand. You know, I understand. men, and women, what, I mean, really. Yeah. Uh, so the, uh, it took me a while to kind of get acclimated mm -hmm. uh, with that. But uh, everything's okay now. Everything is wonderful. I use uh, no substances. I don't use Viagra. I don't Very do good. anything. I have a beautiful wife, and we have a really a wonderful uh, physical life together. Uh, personal life together. It's a lot of fun. That's wonderful. I'm happy for you. Well, my friend. you know, I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to do it if I didn't trust the woman I was with. That's right. You know, I understand. Uh, uh, the logic of time, reading these articles in Time and Newsweek telling you you can't do it anymore because you can't get it up. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> there are fifty ways. There are fifty ways to, uh, to to please your lover. That's and right. There's a lot of ways to do it. You know. So you've you've got to have confidence okay. in that. Sense. Professor, thank you very much for this. Please, it's my pleasure. Have you one. had your prostate out? Uh, no, I have not. I'll see to it. Okay. <laughs> I want to invite everybody here who loves this man and knows his paintings. You have a new website, which is... I do have a website, website. TonyCurtis.com. Exactly correct. I went there tonight. It's not all complete yet. No, not yet, complete yet. But it's well on the way. And oh, it's, how it's, did you like it? I liked it very much, as uh -huh. a matter of fact, until I saw the prices. <laughs> no, the prices didn't turn you off. <laughs> well, the prices deterred me slightly, yes. Well, I'm going to be unemployed. I'm on relief a, next uh, week. A man of your uh, scale and... Uh, <laughs> yes, and depth, Propriety. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for all your kindness to me, my friend, and I'll see you on the road, okay? Somewhere. You know, and I want to thank you. You know, you're a, a, a great, uh, a great yes, I energi am. energizer. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Curtis. Listen, it's a okay. pleasure, Mr. Snyder. Schwartz and Snyder. Be gesund to rate. I'm leaving. <laughs> sit sit, Oops, down. sit, sit down. down. Next, David Milch from NYPD Blue after this break. Thank you. Just as NYPD Blue is among the best series in all of television, its co-creator, David Milch, is one of TV's all-time finest writer-producers, a great friend of mine in this program, and I'm happy he could join us this last week. David, welcome back to CBS, and thanks for coming on. My happy, great pleasure. happy birthday, Thank sir. Thank you, sir. Did you receive any unusual presents this well. year? This is this is showing great confidence in me after the lukewarm reception this anecdote just received off camera. <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact, Tom, I did. Would my, you care to tell us about it, David? My, uh, <laughs> my, now, I don't want you to think this was the only present I got I from my wife. I understand. Because this one may seem a little prosaic. And uh, she gave me a nose hair trimmer. <laughs> and, um, and after I absorbed a certain amount of hurt and my vanity was assuaged, I, in private, I proceeded to apply it. Aren't they in, unbelievable? In the appropriate <laughs> apertures. And I've been <laughs> so uncomfortable the whole It's day. terrible. I, my makeup artist, Kelly Greer, who was just here, she said to A me wonderful tonight, she woman. said, we have to trim, which is, which is the code for oh. the nose hair trimmer. So 20 minutes ago in the dressing room, I put this, and it, it doesn't admit you could just, you, you just, your head wants to explode. It's so Ex terrible. Exactly. Well, so terrible. It's, it's, that's a little extreme, but Plus, what's, what? but but now <laughs> Kelly did actually trim my eyebrows, but if only if I may, Tom, just the conclusion of an anecdote which is holding everyone in rapt attention. <laughs> that be, because uh, you know, I remember the ape and Kubrick's film trying to figure out how to use yes. the bone there, and yes. finally it turns into a. So I had finished with my nose. I had finished with my ears, mm -hmm. which needed a little work, and I assumed that it was to be applied to all areas of ear suit development. So I, I began trimming, I thought, but that isn't what this rotator th So I cut off the outside half of my eyebrow. <laughs> And, it's uh, been a hell of a birthday for you, hasn't oh, it? Oh, and, and, but it, it, it got better from there. Now, let me ask you here about a program that you've done, I believe, that will be seen in the future with Peter Jennings. Yes. Right, called uh, The Century. And they wanted to talk to great thinkers, and they, they chose you, which, and, and, and believe me, a wise choice. What did you and he talk about as we approached the we millennium? Didn't, we didn't talk about a damn thing. Really? Peter was not available. Uh, I think he was interviewing Yogi Berra. Um, but... I was I'm sure Peter will be happy that this segment is airing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I'll bet he's all ears now. Yeah. Yeah. I was, he's probably uh, being called right now. Peter, turn on Channel 2 in New York because your name came up. Yeah. I was, so Peter wasn't there. He, was, he could not be among us. Mm -hmm. But I was thoroughly debriefed by a very lucid assistant of his whose name escapes me at the moment and uh, asked to opine on the implications of the fact that it was about to be 2000. What mm -hmm. did that mean for the past century? Right. What did it mean for the century to come? And uh, As if any of us knew. <laughs> I figured that's why I was talking to Yogi Bear. <laughs> it ain't over till it's that, over. You got that? What more do you need to say? <laughs> it is kind of an accident, isn't it? Uh, uh, you know, it's just a Gregorian calendar. In India, I don't think they're... 
examining the I don't think they're concerned about computer burnout in India, uh, uh, Y2K, not at all. And so, in Yugoslavia, more, it's more like this. So when this thing airs called The Century on ABC, yes. will Peter Jennings uh, uh, be there chatting with you? Uh, you I think he has much too rigorous no but I mean uh, maybe he would ask the questions when he's not talking to Yogi Berra and they would just cut those questions it's, in it would appear as if he were talking to you it's very possible Good. I know that they do that promoting for example bad movies but I suspect that Peter's standards are much too high for that and yes. probably he will simply say you know we asked an entire procession of dilettante poseurs among whom <laughs> was David yes. Mills, right? And, <laughs> and interviewed by and, my assistant in Los yeah, Angeles. Whose name I can't recall. <laughs> right. Okay. We will continue here with David Milch right after this from the, uh, from the sponsors and the CBS stations all across America. <laughs> uh, with David Milch, here's Rod in Orange City, Iowa. Rod, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Hi. Tom. Yeah, Rod. Yes. Yes, you're on the air, Rod. Let's try and get through this now, okay? Tom, first of all, I must say I love your show. Thank you, sir. And uh, I'm going to miss you dearly. You have to come Thank back you. as soon as possible. Thank you, sir. It's an honor to uh, get through on your final week. The honor is ours, Rod. What's on your mind tonight, sir? Hello, David. Hello, Rod. I got a question for you. He's done 20 minutes on hellos here. He's <laughs> yes. Uh, when NYDP, NYPD Blue first came out, I'm dyslexic uh, myself. There was a large uh, controversy, you know, about the adult content and the uh, profanity and the nudity. Um, do you still get that today? Is there still a, a controversy at all? Do you experience any of that? We still uh, get a little bit of noise from the, the standards and practices people at the network, but I, I think that the audience pretty well understands uh, the conventions of the show. There, um, we always tried sometimes more successfully than others, to be responsible when we were going to have scenes of nudity or when uh, profanity was used or racial epithets. We, we, we tried to make it part of the story rather than lugging it in for exploitative purposes. Shock and, value. Yeah, and, I, and, and I, I think we've done well enough with that that uh, the audience pretty much comes along with us. Let me associate myself with your earlier remarks too, Rod. I'm going to miss... Mr. Snyder. Thank you, Mr. Milch. For one thing, I'm going man. to have to double up my therapeutic regimen. <laughs> <laughs> Rod, anything else, or can we move on here? You can move on. Thank you for your compliments, sir, and have a wonderful evening, okay? You have a great life, man. All right, thank you, man. Take care, Rod. Bye-bye. NYPD Blue has had a wonderful run. Have you thought about moving on, doing something yeah, else? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's time to move on. Um, next season will be our seventh season and that's the end of uh, my contract and and uh, I I think uh, in the natural you yourself must be experiencing a similar sort of complicated range of feelings it's you bring a, a freshness to new experience that uh, it's a little hard to generate after a period of time mm -hmm. in the in the same environment which isn't to say that the show doesn't continue to surprise me or ask my uh, my best but um, I'm looking forward to doing some other things I, and next year I will have more of a sort of uh, consultancy rather than the real hands-on hands -on, day to day hands-on hands yeah, I know. This is my problem. I know. Let me ask you about the transition from Jimmy Smits to Rick Schroeder. Yeah. Because I think this probably has something to do with your decision. This has been a tough go for you. Yeah, but but it also I'm I'm very pleased that uh, the show has found its stride with Rick. And I, I I guess I would I'm vain enough that I would have more difficulty leaving if I felt that that we didn't quite know where we were with Rick. He, he's, uh, uh, the choreography of Jimmy's departure was, was very complicated and very draining because we wanted to do justice to that. Excuse me, but uh, when Rick came on, it, it, it was a whole different thing, and it was invigorating. Uh, he's, he's very brave and candidly not particularly experienced uh, in, in life. He's, he's uh, a veteran actor, but he's been doing it for so long since he was so little 
uh, and when and then he sort of left the business for a period of five years and lived on a ranch. So it's hard to get him to uh, relate to real life experience, well, nitty uh, gritty, that sort of thing. He's very willing, but you but you have to sort of set it up the right way. If we have a moment, I'll tell a we story do. about. Yes, we do. Um, uh, we did an episode where Dennis Franz and uh, and James McDaniel's characters have a fist fight, and uh, based on race and uh, and Sorensen, Rick's character, is supposed to break it up, and he just had no way to draw. Uh, Never having been in that situation or close to it in real yeah, life, and, and he was a model, and he was before the cameras for all those years, and he couldn't quite relate to what the tension was between the two characters. They were older characters and we were really kind of stymied not because Rick wasn't willing but we, we, we just didn't have a way to and go. And you have to give him the tools. And I finally said uh, your dad's beating up your mom. Um, and there was an undercover cop outside I said that's your little brother you gotta tell him to keep it from the neighbors and you gotta go in and break this up. Save your mom. And uh, Rick, who had been sort of timid and very provisional, the cameras roll, Rick goes in, picks up Dennis, and throws him through a window, severs the tendon oh my Lord. in his arm. <laughs> so, I'm sure Dennis is glad this is going out on the air tonight as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, we had to shoot around him yeah. for 10 days. This was, this was a little so, but, but that ago. gave uh, uh, Ricky the, the motivation, Rick, to go in there and break up this and, fight, right? And uh, he kicked ass. He was great. And, you know, Dennis is a big Yes, guy. he is. To throw him around, is yeah. that, that's a big and throw. And afterwards, Rick just, he's, it, what's so wonderful working with him is he's absolutely intuitive and wouldn't know how to get back to that place again with a map. <laughs> <laughs> when you move to consultancy and you're not there hands-on, mm -hmm. you probably will have a little more time on your uh, leisure time or downtime than you do now. You flinched from extending that metaphor, Tom. Hands were available. Sorry. Will you be able to resist temptation without the structure of the workplace? The temptation of the demons now that this, we have that we have discussed here many times before. This this is what I'm going to miss, Tom. Exactly this give and take, the back and forth. This is why I've reserved extra time with the therapist starting next week. Okay. All right. um, you're quite right. Structure is very important. Can I ask you to hold the thought because I got a last break I must do. We're structure. With, structure. Perfect. That's what we have here. Structure. David Milch, guest, you audience, me, Tom, now this. <laughs> All whitening toothpastes are not the same. Aquafresh whitening is different. Only Aquafresh has triclean proven... I'm killing long after wars are over. Help care end the crisis. We're back here with David Milch. So we were talking about structure. Yeah. And you'll have more time on your hands. Okay. Yes. And there are temptations out there. We've Idle talked about the, the devil's workshop. Uh, right, right. We've talked about the demons, you know, the cocaine and the booze and all those things. The demons. How are the demons? Well, it, you've gotten rather specific there, but uh, it's spring training. I I do receive periodic uh, email from, from the demons from Arizona. From <laughs> They're up and ready, right? Hope you're doing well out there in California. We're out here in the Cactus League. <laughs> <laughs> Put us in, coach. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm, I have every optimism that that's where they're going to stay. Very good. Very good. Now, let me ask you about one of your passions in life, and that's your racehorse, your filly. Yeah. You've got a prize-winning filly, don't you? I do, and, filly. and her, her name is Tuzla, and in, in that sense, she being... Tomorrow she may have been named after a city which no longer exists. <laughs> I don't want to drag politics into no, it. No, but, but it does rear its ugly yes. head from time to time, yes. Certainly in Tuzla. Oh, yeah, well, yes. Boom, boom. Um, yeah. But uh, she's, she's a great filly, and, and uh, she is uh, probably the best miler in the, uh, female miler in the country right now. And... and uh, I call it, the thing, you know, the thing about control, hand, being hands-on. Hands-on, right. I have a, a Peruvian trainer who humors me, manages me in a, in a way that I, I wish I were produced by 
people of, of, with large salaries. I, I call in the morning. I say, now, did she eat up? Did she stall walk last night? How is the abscess in her foot? And he just says the first thing that comes to mind, that he and the truth are, have only the, the most flimsy and gossamer acquaintance with each other. <laughs> and I hang up, and I know he's lied to me. Right. He probably doesn't even know who he's talking <laughs> no. to. No. <laughs> Tell him anything. But a control, you know, I, I, he allows me the illusion What is your great control. fear with the animal? Uh, well, they, you know, they're like strawberries. They don't stay fresh very long. Mm -hmm. And every morning, one, I bought a horse from the Aga Khan and uh, brought it over here with a great fanfare. Hasn't run a step. Mm -hmm. That's why the Aga Khan has all that property over <laughs> that's there. That's right. And all that money. Yeah. And very few horses but, that don't run a step. Yeah, yeah get rid of them. That's, <laughs> yeah. But that is the nature of that business. Mm -hmm. So wh one is always concerned about that, but it's, a, it's like being a parent. You know that the best thing you can do is get out of the way. And uh, the horse may not do well on its own, but for sure, if you're trying to manage it, it'll never do any good. I want to thank you not only for being a friend to me on this program, but you did a great kindness to my assistant, Joe Ruggiero. You put him in oh, one yeah. of your pictures, and uh, we were thrilled with that, and he was thrilled with that. And uh, if you have any other small parts, uh, we'd like you to give him a call. You bet. He did, he did a great job. <laughs> he did a fabulous and, and, job. And uh, not to descend to the vernacular, although I am following Tony Curtis. Um, <laughs> They beat his balls off on the set. <laughs> they kept throwing him down and, uh, for take after take, and he was so good-natured about it. Yep. And, and uh, uh, he came by with his folks uh, yep. to be, before I came on and, and uh, did a ineffable imitation of me. <laughs> and, I've got to go to sure. time here, but I thank you for everything and continued success. My great success pleasure. You. Okay. I wish you very, very well. Thank you, sir. We'll continue after this break. Tomorrow night, dear Bonnie Hunt, friends may come and friends may go, friends may peter out, you know, but we'll be friends through thick and thin, peter out or peter in. Good night, everybody. <laughs>